Well, we got started on some electrical here. We got up four courses, and that's where the switches start. So you can see I've cut one in here. The cover will actually come up right here to the chinking line. So I'll fill this area here, and the uh, switch covers will get it. And I'll stain those little tear outs down there so they won't stand out so bad. This is the kitchen area. So we've got um, ground fault receptacles going in there, a switch for the light that's going up over this window here. And I, you can see I've got the wire ran for it, so I'll extend that up and carry it over. We've got the power coming in down here. It comes directly from the panel. It'll come up, set to a box there, and catch that wire, which feeds a ground fault receptacle here. Then I've got a downstream wire going from here back to the ground fault receptacles on that end and it's carrying the light as well this will be a 20 amp circuit i just want to show you what we got going on with that doing piece work we've only got a handful of outlets and receptacles going in the logs actually most of them are ran in the concrete as you can see we had those coming up but just a handful i think there's six so we've got a double going in here it'll get the interior light chandelier in the front porch and we've got a box that'll go in over here for this bedroom going out to the um, porch on the back so it'll turn off the light in the bedroom and the fan and light out on the back porch same way with this other bedroom they'll just be on three-way switches i'm just going to do one light one fan it's 10 by 20 back porch so it doesn't need a whole lot of light back there you can see there'll be a double a two gang switch box put in there to carry this and that's pretty much it i think there are six outlets and boxes that had to be cut in overall other than what's run through the floor and then there'll be some on interior walls you'll see that as we get going with it you can see i've got a big 31 footer up here i've just cut it to the right length 30 foot four inches and allow for my two inch overhang i'm about to hit it with my axe and put the tear outs in it then i'll come back and plane it down once i get it to the six and a half inches i slide my jigs on cut both ends We'll see what it looks like when we get done. Well, we got the little hash marks whittled out on the log. Didn't take long. I just put them in random, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Now come back, get it planed down. Well, we got it all planed down. It took a while there. It took a good 30 minutes just to do this one side. But I'm going to come back. I've decided to come back and put little extra hash marks all down through the log to give it a little rougher look. This wasn't quite enough with what I'm getting here, so I'll show you what it looks like. You can see here some of the extra little hash marks I put in. When I come back and torch it, it kind of burns a, a lot of this loose stuff away. It's got a little grain tear out right there. A lot of that'll burn away when I come back and torch it. But these smaller hash marks, they just look a little bit better, as long as you don't do too many of them. Time to do the other side. Here you can see what the log looks like before I stain it. The little nicks after I've charred the wood, they show up a little bit more. And it changes once you stain it. Exterior stain, interior, whatever. It'll change it up. It just gives it a little more texture. It'll make it look a little rougher. But let's get this thing stained. This is what the log looks like finished. It's ready to go put on the wall. I gotta flip it over. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the interior stain on it. I'm using golden oak on the inside. This is a permachink latex based stain. Beechwood is the name of it. I just want it to look old and gray once I put it up. So hopefully the cabin will look older. This is what the interior finish looks like. And get it done. You can see the little hash marks up there. It just gives it a little more detail makes it look a little bit rougher that's kind of what i was after i didn't want anything real slick want it to look old 
like it's been there for quite a while. I don't know if you can see a lot of the detail of the hand-hued look there. But it's turned out pretty good overall when you look at the side of the logs. You don't pay a lot of attention to it. It just kind of catches your eye. This will dry out, lighten up a little bit as time goes on, because it's out in the weather anyway. So I'm ready to set this big 30-footer. Well, I know this looks weird. You got a 30-foot, four-inch log stuck straight out of Precious's grapple there. But you can see that I've got it locked in up here at the back of the grapple, I put this piece of channel iron in here, and then I put the wedge that I cut out back in so I don't mar up the end of my log. And so we've got it, and this is how I carry it down. And I'll show you what I do to install it. It's a completely different setup. All right, we got it down here at the cabin. Got it up in the jigamaru. See, so we got it kind of halfway balanced. I gotta make a little allowance for it. You can see the ice tongs and this load leveler that I rigged up for setting these longer beams. So all I gotta do is turn the crank handle up here to balance this load out. I didn't really get a good connection right here. It should have been down lower as it is over there, but I can still balance the load out and it's got a good firm grip on it. You have to pry them out of there just about. So let's see how we do. Well, you can see Precious has got it up in the air. I'm a little bit out of level here. I've got my electrical wires pulled through. So I'm gonna go back up the ladder now and level this thing out, try and get it to drop straight down. It's touching on that end up about a foot, 10 inches on this end. All right, so I've set it down after leveling it out. You can see I forgot to show, I've put a layer of fiberglass insulation between each layer it's underneath and comes up this little shoulder anyway um you can see that this loose petition wall has bowed out just a little bit so with this log i'm gonna be once i set it i'm gonna be able to be able to bring that in tie it all together straighten this whole thing out not a whole lot probably about three quarters that's about an inch down on that far end but everything should work itself out so we'll see what happens when i get through with it well we got this first cap log on by cutting out these uh door headers here i was able to let that log relax could bring it in good so this has all worked out pretty good it's within a sixteenth of level from end to end it got about uh, i don't know maybe uh 16th high right in the middle right there i just checked it you can see how i did my stadia rods i got one that hangs and i've got another one somewhere i think it's sitting yeah over there it, it, i can stand it on window sills and whatever i used it when i did the lower logs but everything's worked out pretty good so far so well, now it's time to get back to the front i got a run piece logs across there and then the next one to go on is going to be a header log it'll go all the way across after that and i'll bring these sides up get everything up to this level that i've got on the back of the house and then that last course i'll cut in the uh, joist section of the trusses that i'm going to build here you can see i'm setting the last log for the gable in I've got this short boom pole there. I've got in grapple there, Precious has got. That's how I set these higher logs. The um, truss joists will go in next on these, the front and the back walls. And uh, I'll have a longer boom pole. You'll see that in just a minute. But up there getting this one wedged in where I want it. I'm not real comfortable walking around up there on that high corner my old knee i've got i had knee replacement about a year and a half ago it just doesn't work like the original and i take it easy and finally get this one in ready to anchor it down because this is the last solid log i was proud to get that last log in this is what it looks like all the logs finished 
but we're ready now to do the truss joist for up above. You can see I'm putting one in here. This is that longer boom pole that I'd mentioned that I'd used to set these truss joists and longer ridges. Here you can see we've got all the truss joists in. They're just sawmilled lumber. I didn't do any kind of hand hewing or whatever on them. Just left them rough from the saw blade and stained them to match this interior stain. We've got all them in. Got a couple of braces here. Those were sitting level, but I pulled everything to a line. I leveled all four corners, pulled a line in between and measured from that line and that told me how much I had to notch out on these ends. If you can see that, I notched the very bottom of each of these joists so that they set down. Most of them were about seven eighths of an inch and put two screws, these timber lock screws down through the tops of it. So that binds the walls together holds these in place. These were crowned up just a little bit, so I'm letting them relax. I've got 98 inches between the bottom of these joists and the concrete floor. Here you can see where I pieced this top cap log up here because I'm letting these ends hang over 24 inches. That would have made these logs right at 34, in, uh, 34 feet. And I didn't want to notch them out for these joists and try and set them. I was afraid they might break. Here you can see how I've let that top log on the front and the back extend over 24 inches. That way I'm going to set my end rafter, the bar drafter, on this. That'll help hold it up because I'm going to have 24 inch overhang all the way around the cabin. Probably won't do that on the front porch here, but... That's what I'm gonna do, try and protect the logs as much as I can, keep the weather off of them, especially on the southern and western side over there. So that's it. So maybe next video we'll have some trusses going up. Move on to the next phase. Thanks for watching, and until next video, you guys take care and be safe.